Whether you're a student studying Washington Square as part of your upcoming exams, or you're simply somebody that has really enjoyed reading Washington Square by Henry James, and you simply want to recap on key events within this entire story, what I thought would be really useful is creating a plot summary, so essentially a mind map of all the key events that happen within this story, okay, within this American tale. Um, I thought it would be useful to um, essentially summarize in a nutshell what the key events of this narrative is, okay? Arguably a very tragic narrative, especially for our heroine, Catherine Sloper, okay? So as I've mentioned, I have created a mind map here, which I'll be walking you through just now, okay? So remember, when it comes to Washington Square, of course, we have the tragic heroine, okay? Or the tragic hero, Catherine, who is torn between a rock and a hard place, or rather she's stuck between a rock and a hard place, between this love that she's developed for Maurice Townsend, who we realize is actually a very mercenary, calculating man, versus the loyalty and duty that she feels towards her father, who also is equally quite harsh to her, Dr. Sloper, okay? So let's have a look at the key events that happen and how this tragedy essentially unfolds within this story. So the story starts off by telling us that Dr. Sloper actually had married out of love, and his wife had initially uh, gave, given birth to a son who died at three years old, so he died as an infant. Then she later gave birth to Catherine, and because Catherine was a girl, this was to Dr. Sloper's great disappointment. And a week later, or a week after she gave birth to Catherine, she herself died, okay? So Dr. Sloper's um, real love ended up dying, okay? A woman he'd married out of his own choice, a love marriage, okay? But afterwards, we then learn that Mrs. Penniman, one of his sisters, uh, she's a widow. She comes over to stay with Dr. Sloper. She stays in his residence. He's very wealthy. He's part of New York's elite class. So she stays with them in order to help out with the young Catherine, make her into a woman as Dr. Sloper wishes. And she ends up staying indefinitely, okay? So she, it was meant to be kind of a semi-temporary arrangement, but she ended up staying there well past uh, Catherine's youth. Then, when Catherine grows up and she's 21 years old, she does grow up to be a very healthy young woman, but equally she also becomes, or she is perceived by society and her own father as a very plain woman, okay? So Catherine grows up to be a very healthy but plain woman. Now, as an adult, so she, when she's 21, she goes to Mrs. Almond's party. Mrs. Almond is the other sister of Dr. Sloper. However, she is the sister that Dr. Sloper actually really respects. However, Dr. Sloper sees Mrs. Penniman as a bit too romantic for his liking, okay? And a bit too kind of airy-fairy. However, Mrs. Almond, uh, who is Dr. Sloper's favorite sister, and of course, Catherine's auntie, she throws an engagement party for her own daughter called Marion, to a man named Arthur Townsend. And of course, remember that a lot of these marriages that happened during these times in um, American society, so this was in the 1800s, all of these marriages, uh, there would be perhaps out of love, but more importantly, there would also be related to social status, okay? So people who married, especially in New York elite, and of course, this novel is to do with elite society, um, the element of class was very important, okay? It was more important to marry somebody who was just as wealthy as you, if not wealthier, rather than marrying out of love, okay? So, Mrs. Almond throws an engagement party for Marion, her daughter, to Arthur Townsend, and it's at this party that Catherine ends up meeting Morris Townsend, who's related to Arthur Townsend, okay? So, this is when she meets him. He's very handsome, very charming, very easy to get along with, and actually, Morris seemingly, he seems to fall in love with Catherine and he begins courting her, visiting her and Mrs. Penniman every day at the Sloper residence. And Catherine, who has never received such attention, especially such positive attention from a really handsome man, really falls in love with this. So Catherine ends up falling for Morris and Morris then proposes to her and they are soon engaged. However, Mrs. Penniman, who totally supports this relationship, um, realizes and it, uh, it becomes disclosed that Morris Townsend actually is um, penniless. He is living with his sister after squandering his wealth. So he doesn't have any money. And Catherine, who stands to inherit not only her mother's fortune, but also her father's fortune, is a very attractive proposition to him because if he were to marry her, remember during this time, a man, um, his wife would become automatically her, her his property. 
and her inheritance would become his, okay? So Catherine is a really, really attractive woman for Morris because she is worth so much money, okay? So um, after they are engaged and after Morris, you know, really falls in love with her seemingly and gets engaged, Mrs. Penniman and Catherine, importantly, discover Morris's financial status. It doesn't have money. However, Catherine says, I still love you. And actually, um, even if my dad doesn't approve, I have actually a really nice inheritance from my mom. So I'm more than happy for us to still get married because we can still afford our lifestyle. However, Mrs. Penniman accidentally discloses, so she tells Dr. Sloper that Morris has no job and he's actually been funded by his sister. And Dr. Sloper instantly refuses and rejects this engagement of marriage. He's totally against it. Firstly, he sees his daughter as too plain and not beautiful enough to attract men like Morris. But most importantly, he's also thinking that Morris is basically marrying his daughter out of mercenary gold. In other words, he's marrying her just to get his own inheritance or rather the inheritance he's going to give to his daughter in addition to the daughter's inheritance from his dead wife, okay? So Dr. Sloper, who is presented as a gatekeeper into the Sloper residence, but equally into upper class New York society, he rejects Morris from marrying his daughter. He totally, you know, he meets Morris. Morris tries to schmooze him to get him on his side, but Dr. Sloper has a wall and Morris is discouraged, okay? Then Catherine, who Dr. Sloper encourages to break off this engagement, Catherine refuses to break off the engagement and Dr. Sloper, who is completely dead set against their marriage, decides the best thing he can do is to distract her by taking her away from New York society for one year. So it was initially six months and it, it transformed into one year, okay? The stay was extended across Europe. So he takes her away to Europe for a year to distract her, okay? So Catherine refuses to break off the engagement and Dr. Sloper takes her away to Europe for one year in order, in an attempt on his part, to distract her from her love from Morris. However, whilst they are in Europe, Catherine still continues getting a letter twice a month from Morris, okay? So she keeps on getting letters and while trekking, so there's a really important climactic scene. Actually, I've skipped. So after they've gone to Europe, uh, one thing I've skipped is, of course, when Dr. Sloper and Catherine go to Europe, Mrs. Penniman is left alone in the house. And what she decides, because she loves Morris so much and she's totally, totally bowled over by him, Mrs. Penniman decides to invite Morris to stay at the Sloper household. And Morris very quickly gets accustomed to lounging about, just hanging out, doing nothing. And of course, again, his stay at the Sloper residence whilst both Catherine and, uh, and Dr. Sloper are away illustrates Morris's intentions very clearly. He's not a man that wishes to work hard. He's a man of leisure and he doesn't want anything apart from Catherine's own money, okay? So Mrs. Penniman, whilst, um, the Dr. Sloper and Catherine are away. She invites Morris over and Morris lounges and Mrs. Penniman doesn't really question it. She doesn't say, oh, actually, th that's a bit strange. She just allows him to do so and she's totally, totally enamored by him. She's not romantically enamored. She's not in love with him. However, she sees him almost as a son she never had. Then, of course, as I mentioned, whilst in Europe, Catherine still is getting courted by Morris who's sending her letters. So he keeps on sending her letters and at one very climactic scene in the novel, Catherine and her dad, Dr. Sloper, are trekking. They're having a very, a fairly treacherous trek through the Alps. And Dr. Sloper, who up until that point, six months in, has never mentioned Morris, suddenly mentions Morris's name and says, do you still remember Morris and do you want to marry him? And when Dr. Sloper asks about Morris and asks if she would still um, marry him, Catherine says, yes, I still intend to um, marry him once we go back from our trip. And Dr. Sloper acts a little bit dark, okay? This is where we see his really controlling perspective because he then threatens her and asks if she would like to be left stranded to starve on the Alps, okay? So now here, not only is he exercising financial control over Catherine, but here we can see that it's very emotionally abusive and also quite scary, okay? So we can see that Dr. Sloper really likes having his own way and um, he doesn't want any form of disobedience from his daughter. Then, of course, um, you know, there's a lot of tension afterwards and do when Dr. Sloper realizes that Catherine is resolved to marrying Morris, even if he disapproves of her, okay? So we start seeing Catherine exercising a bit of individuality and have showing a bit of independent thought from her father. Now, before they return, Dr. Sloper asks Catherine if she'll marry Morris again. 
and she says yes and Dr. Sloper says okay if you're gonna marry her or rather if you're gonna marry him just give me three days notice before you decide to marry this man who I disapprove of. Then when they return from Europe to New York society, Morris then asks if Dr. Sloper has changed his mind. So Morris is really hopeful that Dr. Sloper has changed his mind because he wants to have, for Catherine to have both inheritances, okay? He wants to make sure that Catherine has his mother's and her mother's inheritance as well as her father's inheritance, okay? Which would make her fairly wealthy. And of course, he is very greedy, so he wants to uh, take over all of that inheritance. Now, when Morris asks uh, Catherine if Dr. Sloper has changed his mind and Catherine says no, there's this mask, this mask of niceness, this false facade falls from his face. And suddenly we realize that because he now knows that he will not have access to Dr. Sloper's wealth, which is considerable, he decides to break off the relationship. Okay, so his true intentions surface. And Morris then behind Catherine's back, goes to Mrs. Penderman and asks her to prepare Catherine for their breakup. And subsequently, he actually breaks up with Catherine and leaves. And of course, this leaves Catherine extremely heartbroken, okay? So Catherine's extremely heartbroken. However, she hides the fact that they've broken up initially to um, from Dr. Sloper and Mrs. Penman. Of course, they discover this. And to Dr. Sloper's glee, he discovers that Morris, who he had known was not genuine, has ended up dumping her, okay? So Dr. Sloper seems to also kind of take this um, glee from his own daughter's suffering, okay? Then, of course, Catherine carries on growing older and older and she never marries. Now remember, of course, in New York society during this time, and even to an extent, of course, um, in modern day society, it's seen as something very strange when a woman never marries, okay? It's, you know, if a man stays a bachelor forever, men are celebrated from being forever bachelors. However, if a woman doesn't marry and then she becomes a spinster, it's seen as strange and it was seen more so as strange in 1800s New York society. So Catherine basically becomes a spinster. So she gets older and never marries and Dr. Sloper himself grows old and ill. And then he asks Catherine one last time when he was very ill to never marry Morris. And Catherine says she can't give him that guarantee that she'll never marry him. Therefore, he ends up altering his will before he dies and he leaves his money to charity as his way of punishing Catherine, okay? This is the last punishment that Dr. Sloper inflicts on Catherine from beyond the grave, okay? Then of course, Dr. Sloper dies. Catherine is left with only uh, to live off only her mother's inheritance. And now a much, much older Catherine who has accepted being single for the rest of her life, a much older Catherine is um, requested to meet Morris. So Morris, much older Morris as well, approaches Mrs. Penniman, says, oh, I'd really love to talk to Catherine now that we're much older and see if we can rekindle a friendship. Mrs. Penniman, of course, who loved Morris, tries to get Catherine to meet him. Initially, Catherine refuses, but then she accepts, she agrees, okay? And when Catherine meets an aged Morris, she rejects his offer to be friends, okay? And she embraces her solitude. However, we can see this as a really tragic ending for this woman who was, you know, who wanted to exercise duty towards her father, but also genuinely loved this man, Morris, okay? So we can see, of course, the two male characters in her life, to some extent, took advantage of her and really mistreated her, right? So that's really it when it comes to understanding Washington Square in a nutshell, okay? These are the 15 points that I would suggest when you're writing out a mind map, especially if you're revising this novel, to consider. Thank you so much for listening.